Yo, Elliot, I have reverted back to Catholicism two months ago, and I asked you before about various traditional sources and finding a parish. I want to get my son baptized and my wife converted as well as my marriage uh, blessed so I can receive communion. It's hard because I get an uneasy feeling going through the process at Novo Ordo Church when I constantly hear how bad they are from the traditional priests online. Should I just go forth with the process at the local Nor Novo Ordo past a parish, even though I have an uneasy feeling about it? Yes, is my short answer. Yes, you should. I had the same problem. Let me just share my testimony, right? My, my story in regards to reversion, coming back home to the Catholic faith, which I love. I love. I love the faith. It's amazing. And every day I love it even more, right? It's like I, I found my home. Right? I don't expect everybody to feel that way, but I was cradle Catholic. I was baptized into the church, and it was such a, it was such a, a grace that I didn't even know I had until I was 40 years old. So crazy, right? But here's why too much information, <laughs> too much information can destroy us, man. Too much information will really make your life miserable. God called me back to the church through repentance. And it's a wonderful thing that we have the sacraments, particularly the sacrament of reconciliation. I knew nothing about reconciliation because I hadn't gone to confession in 32 years, something like that, right? I was like 12 years old the last time I did that. Very long time. And so I had to start from the beginning, and I began by searching where's the closest parish in my city. I don't even know where they are, right? I have no idea. And so I found one that was nearby. I didn't even know at this time that there was a sort of a schism, right? I, can't even, I, I hate to say that because it's not, but it is a schism within the church right now, which tends to be the, the pre- and post-Vatican II 1969 transformation of the liturgy, the mass. And prior to 1967, and for 2,000 years before that, 1969, 2,000 years before that, the mass was always done in Latin in the traditional rite. It's just has always been that way. In 1969, there was a, there was a, a, a commission, they call it Vatican II, right? I don't know what you call it, but there was a gathering. And they decided, well, you know, maybe we should change the mass a little bit to make it more appealing and, and, and receptive to people today, right? Because not everybody speaks Latin, right? So they're like, well, let's put it in the vernacular and let's, they did a few things like they, they turned the priest around from facing Christ to facing the people, right? So we actually turned it more into a, a sort of a Protestant mass, right? Because Protestant for a lot of people was very uh, easy to approach, right? Catholicism's not easy to approach. There's all kinds of ritual and mysticism and different languages and there's all kinds of strange symbols and stuff, right? So people like they were because that tradition wasn't so approachable, they were like, well, let's change it up and make it look essentially just dumb it down so that it's more appealing to most people. That's what they did. So what we have now are those who say they shouldn't have changed the mass. It's been done 2,000 years this way. And everyone who doesn't do the traditional mass is doing it the wrong way. And then we have people who do the new mass, which we call the Novo Ordo Mass, right? The Novo Ordo Mass. The new mass, and they say that, well... The new mass is, is valid, it's in English, and it's good, and we should do it. Well, I didn't know all this stuff until like a year into becoming Catholic, and then it confused me, like it's confusing you, right? Like, I was fine at the Novo Ordo Mass. I like the Novo Ordo Mass. I like that it's in English. I like that I get to participate by pounding my chest. I think that's the coolest thing. When we do that part where we say, um, I've sinned, I've gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I've done and what I've failed to do 
through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Like that act and those words really penetrate deeply for me because it gives me that sense of remorse and that contrition. I remember during the first few times I went to mass, I would cry. I was crying as I was hitting my chest. I was like, wow, man, I really am. I, for the first time, I understood what it meant to repent. First time I understood what it meant to say I'm a sinner. Before that, I was like, man, you calling me a sinner. You don't know me, right? Nobody has a, can't judge me. Man, I was so humbled. And doing this is humbling, right? So I love the, the, the Novo Ordo Mass. I was received back into the church through it. I received the sacraments through it. I was able, I started bringing my family to it. And then I got on YouTube and I started watching all the videos by the traditionalists. And I love the traditionalists. I love Father Ripperger. I love Census Fidelium. I love, uh, we had Tim Gordon on. We had, I, I like um, Marshall, Taylor Marshall, all of these guys, right? They're all traditionalists, right? And they're cool dudes. I was even talking about Kennedy Hall before. Really smart, right? And, and, and they're not just cool guys, right? Manly men, but they're smart. And I would listen to them. I'm like, ooh, wow, yeah. I should go to a traditional Latin mass too, like them. And I started doing that. I started doing that. But then I was torn because I was like, do I drive 40 minutes to go to traditional mass or do I drive 20 minutes to go to Novo Ordo mass? I go to traditional mass and I got to read from the, um, from the missal and I don't understand Latin. I like the, the Latin mass. I like the tradition. I like the incense, to be completely honest. I like, it's beautiful, the incense all the time. Um, I like the reverence. I like that the women cover their head, and the, and you got you can't go to Latin mass dressed like a you know like a bum, right? You go to Novo Ordo mass dressed like a bum. You can do it. You can wear whatever you want. In fact, I think we got a bunch of homeless guys that go to my new parish that I've been going to, and like they literally are bums and they walk in there dressed like bums. But at the Latin mass, there's a sense of reverence, and you know you go, you you wear nice clothes, at least a college shirt, stuff like that. I like that, but then I was torn. I was like, wow, which one? Which one do I do? And they both had their benefit to me, right? They were both beautiful to me. But then, and it was okay, I was going back and forth, right? And this was when I was in Tampa. I was in St. Petersburg. Then I moved out here. There's no Latin mass. And I started to get bummed out like you. And I was like, because I was going to, I was going to both, right? And in fact, my, I started to bring my children and my wife along. And for them, the new mass was more appropriate, right? Like, when you go to Latin mass, first of all, when you go to mass for the first time, you don't know what's going on. Nobody knows what's going on, right? It's not like going to Protestant church. You go to Protestant church and you know what's going on. Everybody sits down and they, they get a great sermon, right? You go to Catholic mass or Orthodox mass, you walk in and it's like, everybody's saying the same thing. There are certain forms, there are certain symbols, there are certain rituals. There's like a, there's a liturgy, it's a, literal, it's a real liturgy. And so for me to bring my family into the church as, as, as new and wild and um, extraordinary as it already is, the fact that it was in English was like, at least I can talk to my children about what's going on. They can learn, they started learning the words. They, so they could pray along. So it was like, wow, I, could, I, I can use this to bring my family along, right? Because I didn't raise them Catholic. So now that I'm there, I brought them into church, I, I can bring them along. They know what's going on. They, can, they understand the words. They know why we're doing what we're doing. If I had to bring them to Latin Mass, not only do I have to explain what's going on, but I go to explain what they're saying. And the only way I can explain what they're saying is, I got to get each one of them a book this thick. This is, a la this is the, the Father Lassant's new Roman Missal. So I would have to teach all my children how to flip through this Missal and then find the Latin and then go to the English and read along. I'm not knocking that at all. There are reverent Catholics that do that and it's amazing. But for me as a revert, coming back to the faith and, and you too, trying to bring your wife and your, and your daughter into it, that's just an extra, God forbid me if, if, forgive me if I'm wrong, but it's an extra stumbling block. It's, a, it's an extra step. It's beautiful, but is that so necessary for their salvation? I don't think so. The Novo Ordo Mass is a legitimate Mass. 
a mass in the vernacular is a legitimate mass. They've been using mass in the vernacular for thousands of years also, which means the language of the people, right? So I, if you can and it works and it's appropriate for you and your family to go to the Latin mass and to, to use the missile and to, to do all that, great, do it. But if it's not, don't eschew, don't turn away from, don't uh, uh, be turned off by the beauty of the new mass. The new mass is beautiful too, guys. I know that there are some liturgical abuses based on where you go. And that's why even when I moved, I started to talk about when I moved out here. When I moved out here, I was having a hard time because I was like, okay, there's no Latin mass. That's fine. But at least I want to find a reverent Novo Ordos Mass, an N-O Mass, let's call it that way. I wanted to find a reverent N-O Mass. I just wanted one that was reverent, meaning that the people and the priest, they were conservative, right? And I was having a hard time because a lot of the Catholic churches, a lot of all the churches, all the churches, churches in America have been feminized. They have been watered down, dumbed down, and it's, it, it's silly. And... It's such a shame because the Catholic faith is such a manly faith. It's such a traditional faith. It's the traditional faith, right? And so, like, I would get upset. I was going to, I, I bounced for a couple months while I was here. And I even stopped going to Mass. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. What am I going to do? These Masses are silly, right? Because, like I said, there can be liturgical abuses. And, like, sometimes the priests come up and they're talking about secular things. And I'm like, I didn't come here to hear about the Super Bowl, bro. I, I don't care about the Super Bowl. I want to hear about the salvation of my soul. Tell me about judgment, death, judgment, and heaven and hell. I want to hear those. Those That's the good stuff to me, right? Tell me about what's going to happen when I die, right? And why I need to keep death in front of me, right? And why I need to stay out of a state of, stay in a state of grace and, and, and stay away from mortal sin. I don't want you to tell me, oh, it's going to be okay. I want you to tell me you must stay in a state of grace, right? I want rigor, <laughs> right? I want tradition. I want rigor. I want somebody to tell me the way it is and not sugarcoat anything for me. And so it's hard to find that in some of the NO churches. But if you persist, I mean, there's Catholic, there's Catholic churches all over the place. If you persist in trying to find an NO church parish that is reverent, like I finally, it took me, it took me six months. When did I move out here? Of April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. It took me six months to find, and, and, and it was, it's a little bit further away, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's good enough, it's reverent. And, bro, for you and for me, for guys like you and me, I'm talking to you and me in particular, who reverted later in our life, and now we have to bring our family around, right? I got to bring my wife around, and I got to bring my children around, right? And my children are teenagers, right? It's hard enough to convince them of anything, right, at this point. But the fact that the, the N.O. church makes it accessible, and not only that, I'm just so grateful. God just, just gives me graces upon graces, thank the Lord. Graces upon graces God bestows and pours into my life. I, and I know I don't deserve it. I know I don't deserve it. But God just continues to pour out these graces. The new parish that I found has, I don't want to say fast-tracked, but essentially has fast-tracked my children through the baptism and, um, and confirmation and communion process, right? Because otherwise they would have to do like 12 years of of CCD, right? That's what they used to call it when I was a kid, you know, formation, Catholic formation. But they allowed us to go into the adult program. They allowed, that was the fast track. It was like, well, you know what, your kids, they don't have to go through all of the years and years like I did when I was a kid. They put us in the RCIA, which is one year, right? And so my kids are in RCIA. And this April, they'll all be baptized. They'll all, and I can, I guarantee you that if I went to a, probably one of the, um, I don't know for sure because the, the traditionalists do it a little different. They expect us, which I do, they expect us to form our own children, to catechize our own children. And I've been catechizing my children for the, actually January last month made a year. I had been doing, I was working through with the, uh, if you don't have a catechism, you should be teaching your family. You should be teaching your family with a Baltimore catechism. 
Where's my Baltimore cat? Oh, I have them out in the hallway because we use them. I, tr I, I, catechize, my f I catechize my own family. Right now we're watching Bishop, Bishop Barron's uh, documentary on Catholicism as a form of catechesis. And I'll probably keep catechizing my children for the rest of the, their lives, right? I just, I have these dreams, right, of my imagination of my daughters getting married and then they bringing their husband to catechesis with dad, right? Maybe we'll do it, you know, once a week that, then. But I want to keep doing this because I'm learning and I love learning and the faith is so deep. It's just so expansive. There's so much. You could never learn everything in a lifetime, right? Just think about the saints, right? Catholics have saints. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. And in fact, I bought, I bought some new uh, icons for new saints because as I learn about the saints and how amazing they are, right? This is St. Ignatius. I'm named after St. Ignatius. And this is St. John Bosco, right? St. John Bosco, St. John Bosco, was a mentor to young men. He started a boys school. So when I learned about uh, St. John Bosco, I wanted to read all his books and learn everything about him because I was like, that's what I do. So he becomes like a patron saint to me, right? St. Ignatius is my middle name, is Ignatius. He was a warrior, he was a fighter who then became a theologian, right? He, he was in battle, he blew up his leg or something like that, and then he started reading the Bible, and then he became like a spiritual warrior. Let me show you what else I got. These are all my new icons. I haven't figured out where to put them yet. This is St. John Chrysostom. Chrysostom is known for a fiery, they call him golden tongue, because he's got fiery speech. Ignatius means the fiery one, too. So these two I relate to a lot because he speaks, right? And he, well, he, he's the fiery one. He's, and they're both super intelligent guys, right? So these are like patron saints of mine, St. Dominic because of the rosary. And I have a devotion to the rosary. I pay the rosary every day, three times a day. So when I say that you could just keep going, you could just keep going with the, with the, uh, with the faith, it's never ending, right? If you want to learn about all those saints, right? Even that picture right there, St. Faustina, that's, a, that's called the divine mercy, right? You can learn about St. Joseph, right? There's so much. There's so much. It's such, an, it's such an amazing faith. Of course, I'm getting excited. But the point is, bro, don't get confused. Don't get torn. Don't get beat up about, oh, it's a traditional or if it's new order. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter as long as, look, the sacraments are valid, right? You're, it's a valid baptism, right? It's a valid, well, did you hear this story? It was, new, it was headline news yesterday that some, some, some priest was doing the baptism wrong. He was, he was saying the wrong words, and um, they were all invalid, right? So just make sure whatever priest is going to be baptizing you guys, they do it the right way. It was just kind of a weird story. I don't know why it made headline news, but anyway, go to the Nova Auto Mass if it's there. You only feel bad about it because you're choosing to feel bad about it. And I know that because I did the same thing to myself and then I had to stop it, right? I had to stop. He said, should I just go forth with the process at the local Nova Auto Pass uh, Parish, even though I feel uneasy about it? Not only should you go forth with the process at the local Novo Ordo Parish, but love it. Learn to love it. Have gratitude for it. I will actually say this too. We live in such a sinful age and we are, we are so spoiled. We're such spoiled, nasty brats. Spoiled freaking brats. That, you, that if you go to this N.O. Parish and you don't love it, consider that your penance. Consider that your punishment for all your years of sin, right? I'm, you go and suffer. Go to the Nova Auto Mass and hate it, but go anyway. Offer it up. You ever hear that? That's, that's something a lot of traditionalists say. Offer it up, right? Go and suffer. But suffer with a holy suffering, a joyful suffering. By offering it up, say, Lord, I have been a, I am a sinner, I'm a spoiled brat. I want everything I want. 
I, my ego is so big that I can't accept whatever graces you've given me because of what I've heard about this on YouTube. Really, you're being a spoiled brat, right? I'm, I'm, I'm bringing out the bullwhip on you right now and I'm calling you a spoiled brat. Really, you're a spoiled brat. Get over it. Get over it and do the right thing for your family. If you're going to make this be a stumbling block that's going to forsake the souls of your family because, because you don't like what the priest is saying or maybe you don't like that they take the Eucharist on the hand instead of the tongue, right? That's a, that is Satan trying to stop you from doing what you need to do. So that's my opinion on that, dude. Done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. My team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me. So DM me the word king on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.